Hello and welcome back to another full snap and snap PC build guide and today I've got a mini ITX build for you in Deepcool's brand new CH160. So let's take a look at the other parts I'm going to be building with today. For the motherboard I'm going to be using ASRock's Phantom Gaming A620i Lightning Wi-Fi. For the CPU I'm going to be using AMD's Ryzen 7, it's the 7800X3D. Keeping our CPU cool I'm going to be using an air cooler from Deepcool, it's the Assassin 4S in white. For RAM, I've got 32GB of Kingston Fury Renegade RGB DDR5 and 7200 mega transfers per second. For storage, I'm going with a single Gen 4 NVMe drive from Samsung. It's their 990 Pro in 2TB capacity. Powering the whole build, I've got a 750W Platinum SFX power supply from Seasonic. It's the SPX750. And finally, for the graphics card, I'm going to be using the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4070 Ti. Okay, that's all the parts. Let's make a start by taking a look at the case. So one thing I really love about this case is the handle at the top. So once you build your system, you're not going to have any problems moving it about. To remove our case's tempered glass panel, there's two screws at the back we're going to need to remove. And once the screws have been removed, we're going to be able to slide the panel backwards, lift it out and away. To remove our other side panel again, there's two small screws at the back we're going to need to remove. And then we're going to be able to pull the panel backwards to remove it. Take a look at the back of the panel we've removed. You'll notice we've got this large perforated area, which is for your power supplies intake fan. There's no additional dust filters, but as the holes in the mesh are quite fine, this shouldn't be a problem. Our case's top panel is held on with four screws. There's two at the front and two at the back. Then with our four screws removed, we're able to push the panel upwards from the back of the case to remove it. Take a look at the back of our top panel. You'll notice we've got a full length nylon dust filter. There's little clips on either side holding it in place. So it's just a matter of pushing the dust filter down from the middle to remove it from the panel. So you'll notice we've got these two rails at the top of the case and this is going to allow you to mount up to two 120mm fans. So while you can mount 120mm fans at the top, there is no radiator support in the case at all. To give you improved access during the building process, these rails are removable. They're each held on with two screws. And then with the screws removed, you're going to be able to lift the rails away. At the rear of the case, you can mount up to 120mm fan. And at the front of the case, you can mount a 120mm fan on this removable bracket. So you can see the holes we've got here. So you're simply going to line your fan up with the holes. This little bracket is removable. There's two screws here. And then once you've removed the bracket, you're going to be able to screw the fan into the bracket from the other side. If you don't want to go with a fan at the front, there is two other options that you have. You can use these front holes here to mount a two and a half inch drive. It's simply going to sit into place here. Uh, and you can see the little holes on the side of the drive. So you're going to put the drive screws through the holes once you've removed the bracket to secure the drive in place. It's also possible to mount a three and a half inch drive and this time you're going to use these holes further back on the bracket. Again, if we look at a three and a half inch drive, you can see the holes on it. And when we line it up, the slots are going to line up with the back holes. The bracket's held on with two screws at the side. Take a look at our case's front I.O. We've got a power button, we've got two USB type A ports, a single type C port, and a combined headphone and microphone jack. So the bottom panel with our case's I.O. is removable and then to install your graphics card you probably are going to need to remove it. So there's one screw at the front and two screws at the rear. And then we just need to lift the panel up to remove it from the case. Take a look at our case cables. We've got our HD audio cable. We've got our front panel connectors all organized into a single cable. We've got our front panel Type-C cable and we've got our USB 3.0 cable. And really nice to see that all the cables are color matched to the case. And the other cable that comes with our case is this extension cable for our power supply. This end is going to go into your power supply. And then you're going to route the cable along to the top and out the back. Take a look at the back of the case. You notice we've got a little notch here at the top. The cable is going to sit into here. And then you're going to be able to plug your power supply cable into here. So in terms of motherboard support, as you'd expect with a case of size, you are limited to mini ITX motherboards. And um, without any radiator support, you're going to have to use an air cooler. But air cooling support in this case is pretty generous at up to 172 millimeters in height. You can see at the rear of the case, we've got three horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets. And in terms of graphics card support, the maximum length supported is up to 305 millimeters. We've got removable full length nylon dust filters on both the bottom and the front of the case. Similar way to removing them for as the back, there's clips on each side. You're simply just going to pull the clips out. And that's going to free up your dust filter. So in terms of installing your power supply, the case is compatible with SFX, SFXL, and also full-sized ATX power supplies. Probably the most sensible option in this case is to go with an SFX or an SFXL power supply. And what you're going to simply do is slot this into place here. And then you're going to be able to secure the power supply into place at the top. 
So I think there's two reasons you're probably going to want to go with an SFX or an SFX L power supply. The first is you're still going to be able to mount a 120 millimeter fan at the front of the case with the power supply installed in this orientation. And the other issue is all your cables are going to have to be in the main body of the case. So if you go with an ATX power supply, the cables for the ATX power supply are significantly longer than those of an SFX power supply. So you're going to have much more cables in the main body of the case to manage. So if you want to go with the full-sized ATX power supply, you're going to need to move this little bracket. First thing to do is remove the two screws. We can then slide the bracket in at the front. You notice the A symbol for ATX power supply. And then secure the bracket with the same two screws. So we're then going to be able to slide our ATX power supply into place and again secure it with three screws. So if you did want to go with a full-sized ATX power supply, the maximum length supported is 140 millimeters. You're obviously going to have to factor in your connectors, plug it into the bottom of the power supply. And they, if they go down too far, it is going to influence your GPU support. Um, obviously, you're not going to be able to fit a fan at the front with a full-sized ATX power supply, but you are going to be able to fit either a 3.5-inch or 2.5-inch drive in front of the power supply. So I'm just going to line our front fan back it up with a 120mm fan, and then we'll secure it into place with the included fan screws. And then we can line the fan bracket up with the front of the case and secure it into place with two screws. We can set another 120 millimeter fan into place at the back and we'll screw the fan in from the back. We're going to be doing as much work as we can with our motherboard before we install it in the case. So we're going to be installing our CPU, our CPU cutter, our M.2 SSD and our RAM before putting the motherboard into the case. To open our socket cover we need to push this lever down and out and bring it all the way to the middle of the motherboard and then we can open our socket cover up. We can then lower our CPU down into the socket making sure we've got the text the correct way round and once we're happy it's sitting correctly in the socket we can go ahead and close the socket cover down again. Then we just need to close the lever down again and as we do the black bit of plastic will pop off and we'll put it in our motherboard box for safekeeping. To install our M.2 SSD we need to remove the heatsink which is held on with two screws. We can then set our M.2 SSD into the socket and you'll notice that when we flatten it down the same screw that holds our heatsink into place is going to secure our drive. We can remove the plastic protection from the back of the heatsink and then replace our heatsink. We need to open the clips on our RAM slots and then we can line the RAM up with the slots and once we're happy it's lined up it's just some firm pressure and it's going to clip into place. And then same thing with our second stick. The first thing we're going to need to do to install our CPU cutter is remove the stock clips that are each held on with two screws. We've then got one of these thumb screws to go onto each corner. And then we've got one of these brackets to go on at the top and at the bottom. You'll notice there's a little arrow on it pointing towards the CPU, so make sure you put it on the right way round. And then we just need to put a thumb screw onto each corner. We can then add some thermal paste to the centre of the CPU, it is included with the cooler. We've got some plastic protection on the bottom of our CPU cooler that we're going to need to remove. To be able to secure our CPU cooler we're going to need to temporarily remove the fan. So we've got two heat sinks here and the fan is actually down in the middle behind this magnetically attached mesh. So you can get your nail into here on either side and just lift a little bit of mesh up. You can see we've got our fan here and we've got a little arrow pointing this way. So airflow is going to be going this way through the CPU cooler. So we've got a clip on each side, it's just a matter of pulling them in and that is then going to allow us to bring our fan up. Next we can lower our CPU cooler down, line it up with the bracket beneath. You'll see that our brackets are now lined up and there's a little thumb screw that we're going to have to tighten up on each end. So deep cool do include a long screwdriver to allow you to do this. So we're just going to pass this down through the gap on the top of the heatsink and then we're just going to tighten each one up in turn. And then we can slide our fan back into place. Now importantly you are going to want to make sure this little arrow is pointing from front to back. And then we can replace the mesh panel on the top which is magnetically attached. Our CPU cooler has two speed settings. Um, all the way over towards the right hand side it's set to performance mode. All the way over to the left hand side it's set to quiet mode and to switch between the two it's just a matter of sliding the switch here so i'm going to leave it set to performance mode we've got this sticker coming from the cables i'm just going to remove and then this is our cpu fan header at the top of the motherboard so we'll get the cable plugged into it and then we'll just tuck the excess cables in onto the cooler next we can start the motherboard into the case lining up with the standoffs at the back 
and then we're going to secure it into place before the screws with a little lip around the outside from the case accessory bag. So building in a small form factor case isn't as easy as a bigger case. One issue you may have is this top left screw. You can't actually get your screwdriver straight, you're going to have to get it at a little bit of an angle. But with that I was able to get enough to be able to turn the screw, but it wasn't as easy as the other screws. Another option you would have is to install your motherboard first and then install your CPU killer while it's in the case. Another potential problem you might run into is that once your CPU killer is in, you might actually struggle to get your rear fan in. And that's the reason why I decided to install the rear case fan before installing our motherboard into the case. Okay, next thing to do is get our case cables installed. Our HD audio cable is going to go into this header here. Our motherboard's one and only system fan header is just here, so I'm going to bring our rear fan and get it plugged into here. Because we've got only one system fan header, I'm going to be plugging our front fan into our CPU fan 2 stroke water pump header. And I'm just going to be able to reconfigure that to run on the same fan curve as our back fan in the motherboard BIOS. So if you preferred, you could of course use a double splitter cable and plug both fans into our system fan header. Our USB 3.0 cable is going to go into this header here. So we'll line it up with the header and push into place. Just below that at the edge of the motherboard we've got our front panel connectors and then below that at the bottom we've got our front panel type C header. We are now ready to install our power supply and I've gone ahead and plugged in the cables that we're going to need. So I plugged in our 24 pin motherboard cable, a single 8 pin EPS cable to provide additional power to our CPU and I've also plugged in two separate 8 pin PCIe cables. Because this isn't an ATX 3.0 power supply we're going to need to use the adapter that comes with our graphics card. So into the adapter we plug our two 8-pin PCIe cables and on the other end we've got a 12-volt high power cable which will go into our GPU. So it is definitely going to be easier to install our power supply without the front fan in place, although I do think it is going to be possible to slide it in underneath the front fan. And importantly we are going to have our power supply's intake fan facing out where it's going to get cooler from outside the case. And then we can secure our power supply into place at the top with three of the power supply screws from the case accessory bag. Next we've got our power supply cables to plug in, our 24 pin cable is going to go into this header here and you see it is actually going to be quite difficult getting it plugged in between our RAM and our power supply and um, you're going to actually be better plugging your cable in before inserting your power supply into the case. And then we've got our EPS cable which is going to go into this header at the top left of the motherboard. So a very important step whenever you're using a power supply with an extension cable is make sure you turn the power switch on. You can imagine when our top of our case is in, we're not going to have good access to this switch. So we can go ahead and plug our extension cable into the back of our power supply. And then we're just going to root the cable along the top and there's a little notch in the top of the case we can pass it down through. So we're now ready to install our graphics card, so just passed all our power supply cables and also our case cables up towards the top of the case where they're going to be out of the way of the graphics card. And we're going to want to remove the first and second slot cover from the top. And we can open the clip on the PCIe slot. Then we can line our graphics card up with the slot. And once we're happy everything's lined up correctly, it's some firm pressure to the graphics card. And it is going to clip into place. And then we can secure our graphics card with the two screws at the side. Next we can plug our 12 volt high power adapter into the graphics card. And importantly we want to make sure we get a nice click. Then we just got a little bit of cable management to do. It does look like we've got plenty of space underneath our power supply for some of the cables. So I just was not happy with that cable management. I didn't think the white cables looked great running across the top of the graphics card. Probably because I've gone for a black and white theme building. If you were going all white, it would probably would be okay. So what I've done instead is I've unplugged all the case cables, passed them round the front of the graphics card, round the back of the black cables, and got them plugged in again. And that definitely looks so much cleaner.
Okay, so that's the build complete. I've gone ahead and set the PC up. If you don't know how to do any of that, including installing Windows, the drivers, your RGB software, entering the BIOS, updating your BIOS and adjusting your BIOS settings, I've made a separate video covering all of that. And I'll put a link to that video in the description. What I'm planning on doing now is some thermal testing and then I'll be back with a case review. So if you wanna hear what I thought of the case, you're gonna to wanna to check out that video and I'll put a link to it in the description. If you have enjoyed this full step-by-step -step PC build guide, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.